When we first started Vertigo 15 years ago, we were publishing, at the time, Mature Readers Comics under the DC Comics banner. We had published about 10 different series from the late 1980s, and six of those series were ongoing monthly titles. Our readers loved those titles, and they really loved the fact that what we were doing at Vertigo was really shaking up the status quo. Readers wanted to see more material like this. Writers and artists wanted to create more material like this. So we said, hey, why don't we just go for it and create a separate line? Even though Vertigo began as kind of quirky, avant-garde takes on old DC characters or really supernatural or horror DC characters. We've never really done superhero characters. You know, my plan was to make Vertigo a home for writers and artists to really express their creativity, to really stretch the envelope of comics, to really show that comics as a form of literature can really be reckoned with in terms of contemporary fiction and art. And, you know, I'd like to say I think we've succeeded. As I've been reading Vertigo, my comic reading has kind of grown up a lot more with, with Vertigo and I'm quite into a lot of it. The first Vertigo uh, comic I read, I think, was um, Why the Last Man? And I thought that was pretty interesting. I've read the first issue of Preacher and, and John Constantine and things like that. But it was only later when you start to read the you know, the whole thing from start to finish, you really get an idea of how complex and fascinating the whole, you know, these, some of these series are. You know, when I first started going over to England back in the late 80s and meeting a lot of different writers, so many of these writers have become so well known in, in our field and in other fields as well too. They've gone on to write novels, write films, and really become superstars in comics. So it's just a very cool thing. Vertigo has had a really significant effect in popular culture, particularly in terms of comics, but even in terms of movies that have looked to comics as a fresh and raw place of exciting new ideas. What's so cool about Vertigo is we're known for a certain irreverence, a certain attitude, a certain way of looking at the world using genre fiction to tell stories about real life and real people and relationships between real people. And I think our writers really tell stories that are relevant. They tell stories that are disturbing. They tell stories that people can relate to. Sometimes they make you feel uncomfortable, but I think that's a good thing because life can be uncomfortable. And the really interesting things about the world in which we live usually aren't all the ones that are neatly wrapped up in a bow, so why not fictionalize them and make them entertaining? I really like things like The Losers and 100% the, the, the ones that are kind of like failed secret service, you know, Black Ops and all that kind of stuff, like that kind of stuff. I also like Fables a lot because uh, with these sort of fairy tale stereotypes it's just absolutely yeah. brilliant. I think Fables and, and have funny. to be my, yeah. struck, my favorite. Yeah, and beautiful art and some of the, yeah, the artwork is so yeah. fantastic. What's always distinguished Vertigo comics from from other comics, particularly mainstream comics, is that we've had more women reading our books. You know, being a woman myself, you know, I totally appreciate that. And our stuff tends to be about real life. It tends to be relationship oriented. Nothing makes me feel better to meet a woman and says, hey, I just read Why the Last Man, I just read Fables, and you know, I just read Preacher, or Sam, Man. They're such cool books. And to me, that's when I know I've really done something right. They're smart books, they're quality books that the people behind them, the writers and artists, are at the top of their game, really telling stories that will, will move you and shake you and want you to tell your friends to read them. If you want to be a professional writer in comics, what you really should do is read a lot. Read a lot of books, see a lot of films, don't read that many comics. I mean, you should know comics, you should know the field, but you really should be well read. You should know history, you should know politics. You should have a point of view and don't model yourself after an existing comics writer. Really try to create your own voice and put forth your own ideas. If you want to be a comics artist, don't teach yourself how to draw comics from looking at comics. Learn anatomy, go to art school, study life drawing classes, study the masters, really get a good education, whether in college or even self-taught, but 
don't use comics on their own as a way to learn how to draw. I mean, it's, it's great to be inspired by comic artists because there's so many brilliant comic artists and I always feel that comic artists get the short shrift just in terms of the field of fine art in general because to be a comics artist, not only do you have to know how to draw well in terms of anatomy, you have to know perspective, you have to know foreshortening, you have to tell a story, and comics artists, I think so many of them are, are so far beyond the skills of, of a lot of people who are working in quote unquote, you know, higher forms of art or entertainment. Um, and I have such a huge respect for a comic book artist. There's toxic fumes everywhere. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was just leaving. I'll uh, I'll be out in a minute. For my part, on the design side, that we had five designers working on the side. That's myself, kind of mainly as a design manager. Then I had three other designers working kind of full time, and a design assistant helping, you know, just do general tasks. And uh, one of me, uh, I'm, I'm the editor. <laughs> so uh, that's quite a fair split, really, isn't it? Um, I did have uh, you had some, some excellent. Help, I had some excellent help on the index. Well, it started here and sort of went there. Conception. Yes, and there's some more, lots of sort of lists of characters. Creating an encyclopedia is a hell of a job. <laughs> there are so many titles that we've published over the years. I think the biggest challenge was the fact that there are over 200 series in Vertigo and we had to uh, get a handle on just about every single one of them. I mean, that was the initial challenge on the planning, was working yeah, out right, yes. how we'd emulate our DC Comics encyclopedic approach with Vertigo, which is such a different beast, really. Yeah. Um, so many you know, different storylines, and they don't seem yeah. to... And obviously how to give certain storylines more or less than other storylines, and how we were going to break that down, which was completely different to the way we did it with uh, DC. One of the personal highlights of this whole project is being able to commission Dave McKean oh, to do the yeah, cover of the child. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because this guy was my, you know, one of my personal heroes when I was at school. What's great about the Vertigo Encyclopedia is that it's a great information tool to really have a place to go to where they can read about all these different series that were done. There's never been a book like this before. And this mm -hmm. book is stunningly designed. I mean, it's absolutely every single page. What we're showing you here is a page from the Gazetteer section of the book, which uh, is a 30-page section, I think, okay, that's right. that contains all the series that we couldn't do major treatments on, but that we wanted to talk about. You get a very good idea of what they're about, and hopefully people will then go and investigate them further. The perfect side of all this is there's a compendium, you know, that you can put on your shelf. And for the Vertigo reader, what a wonderful book for them to have on their shelf and to rediscover books that they've read or haven't read. Because, you know, as much as I'd like to think that a Vertigo reader will read every book that we've done, obviously, <laughs> that hasn't happened. I wish it has. The text is, is full of fascinating information yeah. that you won't find in most places. Yes. And there's about 90,000 words in this book. Pro and that's probably an underestimate, actually. Yeah, I mean, the graphic novels really are the future, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how much um, graphic novel material has been picked up, yeah. mm. you know, by the wider market now. I mean, the storylines are just fantastic. Yeah. As an editor, the thing that I like most about the Vertical Encyclopedia is that I finally have a place to go to. I don't have to go to Wikipedia to find out all the titles that we've published, so it'd be great to actually have something I can pull, pull off my shelf. Yeah, and we hope you, you uh, enjoy the book. We've put so much time and attention into it, and we really hope you guys have a great time. Yes, and please buy the book. <laughs> please get out those wallets. Going forward, what we're doing at Vertigo is really just expanding our reach even further. It's a feeling, it's an attitude, and you can give so many Vertigo books to people who don't normally read comics, and they'll say, hey, I never thought that 
comics were like this. This is just like a novel I've read, or this is just like a film that I've seen, and this is such cool stuff. So that's really what I'm most proud of with Vertigo, and, and I would just like to penetrate the minds of people out there even more. Where are we going?